Certainly in an interview process or in meetings, this is really, really important. Body position. Um, I'm just going to grab this chair, if that's okay. Usually, in an interview, you'll be sat down. Sometimes you might be stood up, giving a panel interview or a presentation. But usually you'll be sat down. And it can be quite awkward for people when you first go in, because you're already nervous, right? You're already nervous, you know, but even if you're not nervous, you've got adrenaline pumping because you want to absolutely nail the interview. And seating positions are really important in the first, in the first beginning. What I often used to get is people sat down and they'd be, and they'd be, and they'd be doing this and then turning up and then turning this way. And then they put the bag down and then they go back in the bag. And I'm sat there like this, you know, my chimp is going, no, it's a no. Get the interview over as quick as you can and move on. So what I would say is, Again, mirror the, the seating position of the interviewer if you are in doubt. And you'll have probably three different types of inter position that an interviewer will sit in. They will either be low power, which means I'm quite relaxed and open. You're okay to be also. And that might be something like this. A crossed leg, a lean to one side, and this is how I interview, because I want to put you at ease. I want to put you at ease. So I'll be sat there like that. If that happens, all you need to do subtly it's just lean back and mirror. And that means we are equal and we are building the pot. And the other position might be a very serious interviewer or, or a, a middle level interviewer who, who sits upright, they look you in the eye and they've got their arms on the, on the desk or a notepad and pen there and they're ready to have a meaningful inter interaction. All you suddenly do is do exactly the same. Okay? If that's how we're all going to be, let's go. And you sit there and you make eye contact. The last one will be the intimidating interviewer. You know, the ones who will sit there and they'll go. <laughs> As in, you better prove yourself to me. I wouldn't recommend at this point that you kick back <laughs> and, and give it the big high power pose. Maybe in that tip scenario, you, you said counter to it. Interviewer. Sorry? You said to always interview the interviewer. And, and, unless it's high power. I would just maybe stay neutral or this because that might give off the, the, uh, the wrong impression. But that's the type of thing you will do. All I'm asking is think about, before you go in, think about your position. So you're not the person going, right, okay, where's my book, oh, this, that, the other. And it, and it, cause it makes us nervous as interviewers. There's nothing better than somebody who would put me at ease in an interview to start with. And we're going to talk around in a short while some of the things you can do and say when you first walk in to put them at ease before you even sit down. If you have to stand in an environment and talk and present, you have to try and look natural. You have to try and look natural. I was never natural at speaking, which is why I bought one of these. Because before that, I used to have this thing where I'd put my hand in my pocket. And then every now and then I'd change it up and, and do, do the left. And sometimes when I ran out of options, I'd, I'd do a double <laughs> and I'd stick both in. And it was, I could not speak and I watched myself back on videos and I could not speak without my hands in my pockets. And it was so off-putting and it was so, so I bought one of these. And even if I don't use it, I can just twirl it around my fingers. So when I'm engaging with you, I can do this every now and then, which means I'm open. I'm talking to you like this. I can change hands, you know, <laughs> giving all my tricks away. So it's more natural. So if you have to present something, rather than you're standing there and you, you sort of, <laughs> your fingers, or maybe you go like that every now and then, and sometimes you go like that, and what do I do with these? You know, buy a pen. If you don't have a clicker, buy a pen. Even if you're not going to write anything on the board, just buy a pen and, and, and swap hands with it. Really good tip. It's got to seem natural. Phys uh, proximity. Proximity is really important. Um, proximity is the distance between you and the, the person you're socially interacting with. Um, the term arm's length comes from the fact that we as human beings feel comfortable when we are at arm's length from other people. And a, a story, I once went to a, a business meeting with a, with a senior woman in a company and it was in a long boardroom and I had a, a laptop and I had to present uh, our product on the laptop. So she sat three, seat, three seats down on the boardroom and I'm, because I'm going on the offensive, right? I'm quite expressive and I'm thinking, first 10 seconds, make a great impression. So I walked straight up next to the seat next to her, I pulled it out and I sat down and her face just changed. And she actually got up after 10 seconds, she said, Martin, I'm going to have to move 
round the table because I've got a real issue with personal space. So my tune's going. What do you think my tune's going now? Right, go on then. Great. I'm taking offence, personal offence, but what it really was was that she wasn't comfortable being sat right next to me. She had to have a little bit more space, so she sat three down. And I'm doing a demo, demo of a product on a 15-inch screen, shouting down the boardroom. <laughs> and it was, it was impossible. But I sort of learned a lesson that day that not everybody's like me. Not everybody's like me. The strong leaders um, are, are really good at this. They, they, reduce, they, they sort of um, counteract the power trip thing. So for instance, where I've observed managers and leaders go wrong is, and I, I'm, I'm gonna do this, don't worry, it's not a thing. But some leaders will go over to their employees and will go if, if, in the workplace and they'll, and, they'll, and they'll talk to them about this. It's quite uncomfortable, that. He's, he's getting really uncomfortable, I can see it. He's getting really uncomfortable. And that's what happens all the time. The great leaders would come over if for a conversation, they would pull up a chair. You know, if I had to speak to you, they would pull up a chair here and sit, and sit down from here. And you feel much more comfortable now because we're on a level playing field. You feel all right? It's very I like it. So, upwards and downwards proximity and peering over people really makes people feel uncomfortable. So again, in social environments, if I'm in a bar or a pub and somebody I know comes over to me and starts talking and they stood up and I'm sat down, I instantly stand up. I instantly stand up so we can be peer to peer on a level and it's a much easier conversation than looking up at somebody like this. Upwards and downwards proximity is really important. Facial expressions. Um, <laughs> yeah, facial expressions. I guess the, the main one here is smile. I'm going to cover this a little bit later on, but smile. Even if you're having a bad morning, even if you're running late or whatever it might be, you're stressed out, smile. Breathing. I'm going to give you one tip on breathing because you can't do much but breathe. But when I said earlier on that you get nervous, you start breathing heavy. Who's done this way? You, you, you start talking and you're a little bit like this and you, no matter how much you try, you can't, can't. That, that happens to us all, right? Especially like the first time I ever stood up to do a talk, I was like that and I could hear myself being like that. And I had a microphone on, so it was clearly coming through. Now, if you're in a, sales people used to do this as well. I used to take my sales reps in to big meetings with big companies and they, because I'm the boss, they would be nervous that I'm there with them. They'd also be nervous because they're meeting a really big CEO of a company and they'd start off like this. And I used to say to them, the best thing you can do if that happens is ask a question. Ask a question directly to the other person because guess what, it gives you 15 seconds to get your bearings together and slow your breathing down. The worst thing you can do is carry on because you will literally pass out if you carry on because it will get worse and worse. So just ask a question. Other than that, try to breathe normal. So, we've talked about the importance and the frequency of face-to-face -face interactions is everything, because it gives you the ability to enchant people with words and with body language. We've talked around be aware in social situations. <coughs> what is the tone of this person? What, what, you know, how are they feeling? Let me read the facial expressions, their body language. Do I need to be empathetic here, or do I need to cheer them up, or do I, whatever it might be. And then finally, the quality of your verbal and non-verbal communication will allow you to put the chin at ease in the first 10 seconds, start building rapport, and you will go from strength to strength. So the game changer, the top of the triangle. And I guess I teach this most, or I, I talk about this most with leaders and managers, but it is empower others. What we have a chemical in our brain or a hormone that when we feel influential and powerful in this group environment or in a situation, we release serotonin. And serotonin makes us feel really confident and really content because we feel powerful, significant, valued and influential. The mistake many people make is for them it's all about them feeling powerful and influential and releasing serotonin in your own mind. What the great leaders do and the great people in business do is they release serotonin in the mind of others. They empower others to have creativity and flexibility in their role, in their job. Employee, employees who have a creative input in their role are three times more productive. Employees who are sometimes micromanaged with a big stick by a really powerful and influential person are not so. 
And this, this resonates in business and in your personal life. If you can release serotonin in the mind of others by making them feel significant and influential, then by doing by default, you will become so too. Too often are we pretty keen to, to cover our own agenda and make ourselves feel great, empower others.